Uh, the collapse of the building had a toll on the, the human population of the, the city. Uh, and it affected people in different ways. For those of you who here at the time, and there are some, and I'm glad to see that there are a lot of people here interested because of the history, even though they may not have actually been around the area at, the, at that time. Um, but it's interesting to see how it, uh, this collapse had affected people. Uh, I was in contact with a woman not too long ago who lived in Buffalo at the time of the collapse. She was a little bit older than I am, so she definitely could have remembered. She was in college at the time. And she said she had no recollection of ever hearing or knowing anything about the powerhouse and the collapse. And she wasn't too many miles away. Uh, the effect that it had on people, of course, was de determined by how much of an involvement they had in the area and in the powerhouse itself. So she didn't have much involvement and was completely unaware of it. Um, I remember seeing a quotation in the newspaper uh, shortly, <clears throat> probably the day after the collapse, and uh, it always stuck with me because it made such a difference, it made me realize the difference that the uh, collapse had on people. Various people uh, were affected differently. Uh, this particular person, he was a uh, an educator in the area made the comment and was quoted in the newspaper that when he saw the, the news of the collapse in the bar that he was in attendance in, uh, he made the comment that he was concerned now how he's going to keep his beer cold because of the collapse. <laughs> I thought, well, that's one way to look at it, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but besides that, it went from that kind of an attitude the loss of the plant to some things that were um, more personal and, and I think probably more so to my family because in that collapse uh, my dad disappeared and uh, my two sisters and, and I believed he was going to be found alive somewhere. Uh, we had hopes for that for quite some time. but. Uh, uh, in the process, of course, we lost our father, and my mother lost her husband, and that was the end of it. Uh, everyone has to grow and continue from that point on, which we have, and, uh, and I appreciate everyone coming here together today to help be part of remembering and uh, enjoying the the tour that we're going to have a little later. Uh, in the 60 years that's passed, 60 plus a couple hours I guess by now, uh, a lot of water has gone over the falls so to speak, uh, both literally and figuratively, and things have changed which is to the good. Um, as long as things don't remain static, I guess we're uh, have to to be able to move ahead. Uh, in that period of time, I, well, I think I've grown up. Uh, I've gotten, <laughs> old, gotten older anyway. Uh, I got married. My wife, somewhere over there, uh, she's here. Uh, my daughter, one of my daughters, uh, I have four children. My one daughter, Diana, is here. <laughs> with a water bottle. I have eight, eight grandchildren, and the oldest, Courtney, is there. Uh, so there's three generations from my dad, Richard, that are here. None of those people ever met him. Uh, I don't know, Renee and I are probably the only ones here that did. Yeah, uh, good friend, good friend. But, uh, so things have changed, um, not that there's anything that I can complain about uh, because I've enjoyed uh, the opportunity of being here 
I have two sisters that have since moved out of state. They both have contacted me in the last day or two to uh, wish that they could have been here as well to remember this. Um, I had a few, a few other things to, to uh, mention, but I think Barry covered some of those inside. Um, there's always been questions as to what took place. Um, I think I'm probably the only one that was uh, wasn't there. But um, a couple hours after the collapse, Bob Chapman, who was my dad's assistant, came to the house to tell my mother what had taken place. And some of the things that Barry said in there regarding the generators and where people were in the plant uh, aren't quite exactly what I remember being told at the time, so nobody seems to know uh, what what actually happened. But uh, my, my dad called my mother about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which was the second time that he contacted her that day because he he was not sure when he was going to get home, and then when he called at 4 o'clock, he said, he said, there's a lot of problems, and he said, I, I don't know when I'm going to get, get back at all. But he told her that he had shut down, he was the uh, supervisor of maintenance in 3C, the one that was uh, furthest to the south. Uh, he told her that he had shut one of the generators down, yet there's no record anywhere of any indication of that being done. And I know he told her that because she asked him uh, what would happen if you turned the generator back on. He said it would shake the building into the river. And she said, what would you do if that happened? And he laughed and said, I'd have to swim for it. And it uh, didn't make her very happy, but uh, that was that was the comment. And there's never been any indication in any of the writings that the uh, generator actually had been shut down. And uh, there are some other things that, uh, in, in the time sequence that don't seem to add up to what other uh, writings have been done regarding it. So it's hard to know exactly what happened. But uh, at any rate, uh, we're here because of that and appreciate the presence of everybody here enjoy the trip down the elevator. I know uh, uh, the uh, article that was written in Sunday's paper, um, uh, who was, I can't remember. Uh, Teresa Sharp. Teresa Sharp. Sharp. Yeah. I couldn't remember her first name. Well, Teresa, Teresa wouldn't go down below. She was afraid of the elevator. So I hope, <laughs> I hope there's a few of you that are able to, to make it down there and uh, hopefully we can talk more. Uh, again, I appreciate the fact that the uh, elevator has been reconditioned and rebuilt so that we now have an opportunity to go down and see things where in most cases it was very, very difficult for people to get there. So I, I don't want to take any more of your time. I was one of two janitors down below. I had to clean the generators uh, with another janitor. We took turns. He has since passed away. His name is Carl Reising, a fine gentleman. And of course, uh, Richard Draper was a friend. I worked with him for about four years. And uh, just a wonderful man, yeah. Two weeks before the uh, plant fell in, I was transferred into the engineering department in Buffalo, so oh. I feel lucky. Yeah. Uh, mm. And uh, uh, 
that I wasn't around, I don't think they would have needed a janitor down there at the time. But anyway, I was quite familiar with Shalkoff. Uh, I started with the power company in 1950 at the age of 20. And when it collapsed, I was 24. And uh, my wife and I have had 12 births, one dozen, six of each. We have a lot of uh, people in our family when we get together. I just feel very lucky and very fortunate that, uh, and feel sad too at the loss of Dick. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I, enjoy, I had 23 years in with Power Company. Gus Porter, Augustus, a friend. I'm a surveyor too. That's why I call him a friend. My number, uh, my license number is 41019. So in 1964, there were 41,000 surveyors since Augustus Porter. <laughs> wow. And a lot wow. since. I don't know what the numbers are up now. Yeah. So I surveyed uh, Shulkoff, uh, with the for the power company. I became, uh, uh, I went from of the power company between here and Rochester, the Western Division. So I enjoyed that uh, for many, many years. And then I uh, decided to uh, go off into my own business in 1974. And I, I'm still working. My birthday is tomorrow. I'm going to be 80. Okay, now we're going to, we're going to line up. <laughs>